and welcome back to a special episode of Flatbed tonight. We are joined by Adam Grow. That's right, the host of Cash Cab is on the flatbed. Adam, welcome to the show. Thanks this, for coming. This is amazing experience to be the guest on a, a moving, well, potentially moving vehicle. Usually I'm hosting that, so be on the other side, it's an honor. I feel a little odd asking you questions. When I, when I, you know, I'm always thinking that I should be on Cash Cab. The guy in the back, the obnoxious one, yelling right, at right, the right. it's, it's harder than you think. The I lights, there's is. a lot of pressure. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna just ask me open-ended kind of questions, you're you're safe. All right. If you're gonna ask me trivia questions, how much money do you have on you? Yeah, that's no, a different I, ball that, game that, the, none. Yeah, none. I'm a Canadian <laughs> entertainer. <laughs> that's right. um, so, now you're in Ottawa today for something special. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I have been able to be by collateral kind of experience. I, I'm a stand-up comic, and I was a stand-up comic for years before getting Cash Cab, but many Cash Cab fans have no idea. But stand-up comedy and radio are in my roots as a performer. Yeah. And so I just, I was on a guest on another show, uh, and Sandra Badalini was uh, on the panel as well. We were talking about the industry, and she had, you know, began this movement to get the attention of the prime minister of this country to recognize stand-up comedy as an art form because it's not officially recognized as an art form by the, by the by the any level of government. So we aren't able to apply for the infrastructure of economic support through the, the channels that musicians are and film and TV are. So I just happened to be on this and she said, you, you're a comic and you get on board. And so we formed an ad hoc committee and uh, a little over a year later, we, uh, we had our first major milestone, which we, we had a, a formal petition yeah. sponsored by an MP in Toronto, Julie DeBruzen, for the Liberals, uh, read in the House of Commons to get this changed. So, you know, a bunch of us from Toronto traveled here and there were a bunch of local Ottawa comics yeah. that were in the gallery. And it was like, it was like, you know, there's a lot of things happening in the world. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of things that are like bigger concerns, but it was kind of refreshing. And I think that MPs on all, all, across both sides of the aisle felt like it was a, a breath of fresh air. There was yeah. a standing ovation for the petition. Was there? In the That's House of Commons. Well, like, I'm, I'm this, really right? happy. Now I got chills yeah. and it's not just because it's freezing. Yeah, out. it is cold all of a sudden. Uh, it's turned here. I, you know what? That's actually great to know because, you know, oftentimes people you know, they, 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 re, they recognize Canada and comedy almost, almost synonymously, yet we don't recognize uh, the art uh, as, as it is in Canada. It's not just telling dick jokes, right? Yeah. I, you know what I mean? Which some people do, and, but a lot of people just go, ah, you know, what have you. But there's a lot of work, and I, and I say that it's the purest form of art because you're the writer, you're the performer, and you're the director. And, uh, you know, and the, you get immediate feedback from the audience and you've got to adapt and you've got, and so it's a very, I, I of course, my, my roots are being a stand up. So I love the art and I, I love the fact that, you know, it's, and I love comics. I love people who can make me laugh. They're the funniest, you know, it's just, I don't know. Well, I'm going to have to edit you, all this. You, no, it's all right. If, <laughs> even if you strip away the, the part about the content, I mean, the con we are content creators, like any yeah. poet or uh, you know, musician. Yeah. But if you even take away the, the content and look at the performance, if you, if you go to a stand-up comedy club uh, and you watch, or even a big theater, and you watch a comedian navigate a crowd of people who have yeah. come there, most of them don't know each other. Right. And uh, that that person armed only with amplification and their voice yeah. and their expression and their body language is able to captivate an audience for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours. It's it's an art form. Absolutely. Right? And with so no if, you, if you go, maybe the content wasn't exactly what I think is funny or it was a little vulgar. OK, but you have to acknowledge that that ability to ride the waves of laughter and have the right timing and the beat and the cadence and be able to read the audience is is truly something special. Oh, without without a doubt, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. I wish I could do any of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. This, the way you navigate the street right now, it's it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, you should yeah. see me at it's, a red light. It's an it's, art. It's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of which, I yeah. want to move you up to the $50 questions. Yeah. How did you get started in comedy uh, in, in your career? The first stand-up I ever did was uh, when I was in college at U of T. Okay. 
And I, you know, prior to that, I'd been on student council in high school and even going back to elementary school. I wasn't, I wasn't the class clown, but I was always like on the microphone or hosting things or in sketches or whatever. And so when I went to the University of Toronto, I grew up in Vancouver, came out to Toronto, and I ended up hosting this talent night we called Coffee House. Okay. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try stand-up. And it was the first time I ever did like comedy, as, aside from like writing bits or something right. like that. And it went really well. And so people were like, you know, you should do this. So I did some amateur night comedy yeah. in my university career, uh, but never really thought about it as like a career path. Right. I, I was good at it. I had successful outings. It was, you know, satisfying. I got a lot, but I thought, I, who does that for a career? Are you crazy? Are you nuts? Some of us so are stupid. I studied and became a social worker. Oh, <laughs> it's like, what? Right? Oh. And so then I was like, hang on a second. And, you know, I, I, had, I got my full-time job offer out of uh, university. I was working in the social work field, and I salute anybody that is doing that. It's, it's quite a commitment. And I just messed around with so much of that stuff, right? right? Like goofing around. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I should check out a creative angle. And I, it just kind of hit me. I, I went back and did a year of radio. I got a certificate, you know, eight-month program, and never turned back. Good I worked in radio for like five to seven years, and and that was that's a whole other story. Right. Uh, but you're doing bits, like, and when you're radio, when you're, you're live, it's not immediate reaction from the audience, but you, you the moment is live. And yeah. You live and die by the ratings and what your audience thinks of you, and there's a lot of information, but there's also like a little bit of humor in there. So and hosting stuff in the yeah. community, so that it just kind of snowballed from there. Now, of course, everybody knows you from Cash Cab. Yeah. How did you get that gig? Well, that. Uh, is a franchise show. Right, it started in the UK, is it that started right? started in the UK, uh, they only did it for one year in London, but then they franchised it out, and at one point in time, there's been uh, a cash cab in over 30 countries. Really? So Canada was, you know, relatively early, and I think we're one of the longest. We had eight seasons. Really? Now, uh, you're still running? We're not still running, in repeats, okay. in repeats. But eight seasons is a, is a good run in Canada, uh, so I was I pretty happy. So, yeah. I mean, it, I would have done it forever. I mean, it was so, and it's yeah. one of those things where, and when you look at a show, I mean, you're in the industry, yeah. And I'm sure it doesn't happen with this show. But there are shows that you see, like you clearly they were what's called in the industry sweetened yeah. in post-production. Yeah. Right? Cash Cab is literally as much fun as you think it is. Like it was a gas to make that show. There was never a day where I go, oh my God, like, I wonder what we're gonna get. And one of the things that we didn't know, we I didn't really watch a lot of the other versions, but when we were in tech rehearsals, yeah. we, we you know, like you, we've got a mobile television studio. Right. Right? you know, quarter million dollars worth of TV equipment driving around. Uh, yeah, we my, mine's not worth a quarter million, maybe right. a couple hundred. Well, back in the day, we were the first in Canada to use the flash media. It was really? like brand new at the time. And, uh, hey, come on, drive your butt. Cabbies, the, we hate bus drivers. Oh. We hate bus driving. No, we don't, we don't, I'm kidding. But, uh, we, you know, we didn't know what we, what we knew was the show was a franchise hit in, in other markets. But we didn't know what Canadians were going to be like as contestants. Right. So the 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 kind of like unknown was are, are Canadians going to be like not funny or interesting? But they literally I've now watched yeah. other versions. They're fan, they're they make the show. Canadians well, I, well, make the, the show. You know what? I truly believe that the guests make the show. The yeah. personalities, uh, you know, and and you're a great uh, uh, facilitator. And I, if I if I can say that, no, I know you are because you are extremely affable. Okay, the likability factor is huge, but you let them be yeah, who they are. Yeah, it's which so important. It's so important. Yeah, it's so important. Well, I wish for I me, could do the same for you. Yeah, I know. Like uh, I feel like you're you're you're, you're holding me back. <laughs> no, no, I'm, you're doing great. But for me, as a host of a show, you're not trying to be the star of the show. You're trying to make the elements be the best that they can be. That's right. And so sometimes I would get people that would hop in and I could tell right away they're going to be great and I don't really need to give them a pep talk or make them feel any more comfortable. Yeah. Other people were kind of like, okay, what's going on? And I needed to turn around and go, look, everything's cool. Just be yourself. Yeah. And I've never, you know, there's never a script read. Like the, what they said was authentic. There was right. never me saying, try saying this, you know, but it was me sometimes making them more comfortable so that they could be themselves. Right. And that just got easier and easier over time. The more people saw the show, the more they kind of envisioned them being on the show going, this is what I will be like if I'm on that show. That's right. And it was amazing. It was well, and, and now people, they get in the, like they recognize you. I, I, watch, I assume it's the later episodes, but they get in, they go, 
That's a, we're on cash cab before before the lights I know, go it off. It got harder to fool people. Now, have you ever the lights go off? And, hey! <laughs> now, when the lights go off and every you know, you ever get in someone's like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, this is you're on the cash cab, and they go, fuck this, I'm out of here. Yeah, no. It, it, Early on when we were, again, making the first season, yeah. and nobody had seen the show, at least not in Canada, there were maybe a half dozen people that were like, no, I don't, no, I don't think yeah. so. Really you and your sketchy, yeah. whatever. Most people I could talk into it if they were sketched out because they hey, look, I'm, you could actually win money. Yeah, It's on Discovery Channel, so you know I'm not taking the piss out of you, right? right? Like, this is serious business here. Yeah. Although, the, hey! No, I'm just, it's gonna be. It's a you know. It's a callback. We just said the same joke over and over again. You no, see, no. Cabbies but... don't like bus drivers. <laughs> yeah. Never step on a comic's punchline. I'm sorry. Unbelievable. <laughs> like if they had just tuned we, in now. They, we no, used to kidding. do that actually. No, no, I'm just we kidding. used to do that as a like the, when we were out west on a tour, and and you'd just get bored and you'd be doing this. You know, you'd say, okay, I'm gonna do half of your material. Oh tonight. no. Oh yeah. That's. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, I don't was... pay close enough attention to who I go on the road with. I've got, I got nothing left. Oh, got, okay. Yeah, whatever. Um, so, so anyway, it was, uh, you know, early on, it, I could convince them. Yeah. After that, there was maybe one or two people that said no, and it was for reasons unrelated to not right. wanting to Witness be Witness protection. Show. Yeah. That type of oh, there, there were some moments where people was like, not supposed to be with this person. There was some of that stuff. Right. But most people kind of, you know, God, oh, I'm out with colleagues. It's okay. Yeah, you know, it's exactly. Like, okay. yeah. yeah. Well, I'd say now, what was your favorite moment in the in? The, and I know that's that's trying to narrow it down. But in eight years of shooting, what was your favorite moment that you look back and go, "Wow, that was a great episode or a great person"? Or, well, there there are a number of epic episodes. I think that you know, I have to. There were two in particular where I was laughing so hard, I had to pull over and stop because it was dangerous. Like I was like. And it's hard to explain. Uh, the one group, there was three guys, and when you're making a TV show, you know we're not faking anything, but there's TV stuff once in a while. And they were like, you know, basically nice frat boys, not like kind of frat boys like right. that you'd go, oh, yeah. They were like kind of like that kind of yeah. personality. And so they were really good energy, really funny guys to get in. And right off off the first question, I asked them a question, and the answer was pixels, like on a camera. And uh, there was a sound problem, right? Kind of right. like when a bus drives by. <laughs> so there was a bit of a blip. So the, I have a director in my ear, and they and you know they got the question uh, right, and uh, you know the the lights go off and everything like that. And so I just had to re-ask the question for for our purposes. Right. That moment had already happened. Yeah. They just needed me asking the question, the question again. So that's about as much faking as we did on Cash Cap. So I asked the question again, and for whatever reason, I might have been giddy. They go, Pixels, this game is easy. <laughs> like they, they were just giving me the gears like they want more money. And yeah. I'm like, no, no, guys. They go, oh, they were like, they were just totally giving me the gears and they knew it. And for the rest of the game, for the next three questions, they were just, you know, taking the piss out of me in a fun way. Yeah. And I said, like, they were cracking me up so hard that we literally had to go into edit. To, like, I had tears coming down my face because they were having fun at my expense. Oh, that's awesome. Because, you know, Cabby had to re-ask the question. So those are my favorite moments. Yeah. What I, I love making people laugh, and I, I love that the audience would, you know, have a couple laughs with me when I'd kind of give that, are you kidding me, kind of look to the camera. But when contestants were so loose, like, those three guys, that's what they're like. Yeah. They didn't all of a sudden get on television and go, um, thank you, Adam, for this great ride. And they were, like, exactly who they were. From the moment they hopped in, and I go, that's precious. I mean, like, you know, that's, you can't that's the magic. That. Yeah. That's magic, right? That's yeah. that's the and that's sometimes when we have a guest on the show just off the street, and they are a, a natural. Yeah. And it just it makes everything. And then there's others where you're just uh, you're a dentist, yeah. right? You're pulling teeth all yeah. interview long. You've been a lot like that, actually. You're yeah. very difficult to interview. I know. Everybody that asks me the question, what's the most epic moment in the cash cab? They're like. I know. That, I, that's that's it? it. No, no. I think it's great. There was no like. There were. There, There's people that were. You know, doing things in the backseat. So, well, let, let yeah. me ask you that question. So, Drew Barrymore on Letterman. Yeah. Okay. Flash is Letterman. Has she ever been on Cash Cab? She's never. We never had any celebrities. There was a little bit of flashing. I got a couple phone numbers on Cash Cab. Really? really? Yeah. That that goes over well with the married wife. Edit. You know. Yeah. No, but I. No, it was like Canadians are are true to form. 
in, yeah. in the most positive way, not in a, in a classic stereotypical kind of apologetic way. There, uh, there's a reason that, you know, I'm in Ottawa fighting for the brand of stand-up comedy. Right. Canada's become known for comedy, world-renowned, yeah. and Canadians are just, in the right way, a combination of self-deprecating and also able to, you know, be loose and have fun and enjoy themselves. I actually did one episode of the American version of Cash Cab. Oh, did you really? Uh, you know, they're different host, whatever, for whatever reason, there was a special, he wasn't available. So I drove a cab in Manhattan, which was crazy. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, the contestants, they, they didn't like, the, the fans of the show did not like me at all. Like when really? that aired, they were like, what happened to Ben Bailey? We love that. Who's that guy? He's so boring. And I'm like, whatever. It was my first season <laughs> out of the Canadian version. But I, I had already cleared one season in Canada and I knew from the, like I did a whole day and night of shooting in with New Yorkers and they were not anywhere near as endearing or interesting or funny as Canadians. I, I, I will happily have you publish that. Oh no yeah, problem. no, I listen, yeah. I we are. We're going to, definitely. But if We're, you could take out the part about me talking about driving the cab in Manhattan, that would be great. Yeah. Well you don't mind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, so and all my bus jokes. If you could, all the bus, we're gonna take those. If out. this could be ninety seconds of Adam getting mad at bus drivers, that'd be awesome. Actually, that'll that be a great <laughs> little s series of outtakes. That we can just it. do that, you know, and, and and we just spread around the internet that Adam's really a, yeah. a prima donna. Hates and actually, and, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I, it's freezing. Yeah. So, so I know you're cold, and and I I would love to continue this conversation, um, but we we're gonna go, okay. and we're gonna we're gonna bring up our next guest. But uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. This has been Chris Hawes and Adam Grow from Cash Cab on Flatbed Tonight. Thank you for watching. <laughs>